Shabbat Shalom. Let's hear every voice. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Now, it, it may be tempting to sit back and enjoy the beautiful harmonies of the Teen to Fifteen, but that's not why they're here. They're here for you to sing. So please turn to page 214. Page 214, as we remind ourselves, we're created in the image of God, which includes having a voice, because God has a voice and probably likes to sing, I'm guessing, yeah? So please join us, page 214. tonight is going to be a feel-good service. And you know how I know? Because I already feel so good. It is so wonderful to have our Teen Tefila team with us here tonight, and Jacob Krause and his wonderful band, and Oa Cantor, too. This is great. And so to welcome Shabbat, we'd like to invite Debbie Binder to come forward for the lighting of the candles as we turn to page 13.
Light is the foundation of life, yet impassable to touch. Light is flowers growing and fruit trees blossoming, photosynthesis and rainbow shimmering. Light is energy and romance, enlightenment and lightning. Light is red and violet and magenta and blue, lasers and campfires, warmth and illumination, the sunset and the dawn. Ta Adonai Eloheinu Melchalam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Lahavlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Turn to page 34 for Le Chadoti. Continue together at the top of page 41. We give each other hints in smiles and glances, in loving words, in sharp reminders. We give each other hints, knowingly or unknowingly, in great thunderclaps or in still small voices. We give each other hints in these bonds of family, in these gifts of friendship, spoken or unspoken, as together we find our way to God. 
continuing on page 42. <laughs> Turn to the middle of page 46. Just as the hand held before the eye can hide the tallest mountain, so the routine of everyday life can keep us from seeing the vast radiance and secret wonders that fill the world. Baruch atah Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravim. Blessed are you, O God, who makes the evening fall. And then on page 49, we are loved by an unending love. We are guided by the still small voice within us. We are loved by an unending love. A ne'er tamid to be tended from generation to generation. And a gentle love. Giving meaning to our existence, structure to our lives. And of all the generations who have embraced their covenant. Bye. 
As you see, we continue together on page 57. <coughs> Ve'avta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavecha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol miodecha v'hayu hadivarim ha'ele asher anochi mitzavecha hayom al levavecha. Vishinantam Levanecha, Vidibata Bam, Mishiftecha, Bevetecha, Uvlechtecha, Vaderech, Uvishokbecha, Uvikumecha, Ukshatam Leot, Alia Decha, Vihayule Tota Fort, Benecha, Uchetavetam. Al mezuzot betecha uvisharecha leman tiskeru vasitem et kol misvotai pitem kidoshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem asher hotzeti etchem meretz mitzrayim. Yot lachem Elohim, ani Adonai Elohechem emet. Before services this evening, we had our Camp George dinner, where prospective campers come to meet the director. Camp George is the Reform Jewish summer camp in Parry Sound, Ontario. And as some of you know, I went to rabbinical school specifically to become a Jewish camp director. It's true. I always felt badly about not achieving that, except that when I, I had taken my kids to George for many years, and as I was getting a little bit older, I was on faculty for a few weeks, and I do remember this one moment. I was sitting in the Chader Ochel, the dining room, with the 400 kids screaming in my ears, and I was eating this really greasy piece of grilled cheese and a canned tomato soup, and I thought to myself, I'm really glad I'm not a Jewish camp director. And I mention that story because um, many of you, like me, this week, with the weather the way it's been, have been thinking, I would rather be anywhere else except for here. And on an evening like this, listening to the Teen Tefillah team, for a moment we recognize, I am really good exactly where I am. We think of Gula, of redemption, as fleeing for redemption. The, ch the children of Israel flee from Egypt to Israel. But sometimes Gula, is all about appreciating exactly where you are in the moment, no matter how cold it may be outside, as we sing together our song of redemption on page 62.
since we have these beautiful screens, every week I come into <coughs> services and try to figure out what is depicted on the screens. Like, when I first saw this, I'm thinking, this is what the Kremlin would be like if it were run by Jews. I mean, that's, that was my first thought. <laughs> but now that I look at it more closely, I think it probably is a synagogue somewhere in the world. And in that place, at this hour, those Jews, whoever they may be, are praying these prayers of Shabbat just as we are. And so on page 65, we celebrate the fact that Jews all over the world are, are praying these prayers along with us. Just pick a part and join in. together on page 68. Adonai sifatai tiftahu fia gite hilatecha eternal God open my lips that my mouth may declare your glory. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Elohe avoteinu vimoteinu Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Leah, Elohe Rachel, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vehanora, El Elion, Komer Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol. Bezochech has te avot ve imaot, umevi keohula libnev nehem, leman shemo beahava, mele hozer umoshia umagen, paruchata donai, magen Abraham, 
As your seed, we pray silently. No. 
afternoon, I was visiting Beaumont Hospital. I have a very special friend, and I visit him regularly when he's in the hospital. He's an elderly gentleman, and he's been in the hospital for quite a while now, and he's been waiting for a test. And he's somewhat <coughs> disturbed that the hospital is not going ahead and bringing that test to him with the speed he thinks is appropriate. And he looked up at me and said, if they come during the Michigan-Michigan State game, I'm going to tell them, I'm, I'm not making this up. This is a Michigan fanatic. He says, if they come after all this time and tell me I can finally go get this test during that game, I'm going to throw them out of my room. Uh, we don't control what goes on in hospitals often. We don't control what happens to us when we're dealing with a medical challenge. And all we really can hope and pray for is that we have by our side family who loves us, who will take care of us, doctors who care about us, and within our hearts the spirit and strength to find some ability to look with optimism to the future. We join together on page 83 with the Misha Beirach, and you're not allowed to pray at this moment for the team you want to win. <laughs> ethics of the fathers, we are taught, in a place where there are no human beings, strive to be a human being. I went to the border not knowing what I would see and who I would find. I went to the border and I found human beings. I went to the border to show compassion, and I found people ready to receive compassion. I went to the border to see, and I found people who wanted to be seen. I went to the border and met people aching to be seen as human beings, and met the human beings among them who were treating them with dignity, respect, and care. In the faces of the men and women trapped in Mexico because of the Remain in Mexico policy, and the faces of the men being held in prison on U.S. soil for committing no crime, I saw human beings. The looks on their faces spoke volumes. They are beleaguered from fleeing violence and exhausted from uncertainty. In their faces, I saw a pleading, help me, raise your voice for me, tell people we are here. Let them know that all we want is to be safe, to raise our children without fear, and to contribute to a country we love. Please, they pleaded, take our stories back to your hometowns and let everybody know that we are mothers and fathers, that we are hard workers, that we are them and they are us. I went to the border with 18 conservative and reform rabbis from all over the United States, including the chancellor of the Jewish Theological Seminary, Ernie Eisen. In a reflection he recently published about the trip, 
He said that when people ask him why he went, he said, because I am a Jew. He continues, the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that Jews are not permitted to stand by, silent or indifferent, in the face of suffering and injustice. We are rather called to comfort and to bear witness whenever and wherever we can. Our task is to remember and remind others that every human being is created in the image of God and must be treated with dignity. We also traveled with representatives from the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society and Trua'a, the Rabbinic Hall for Human Rights. The Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, or HIAS, is the same organization that helped many of our families get to the United States and then settle us into our new homeland. One of our leaders from HIAS precisely expressed the moral urgency we all felt so strongly that we left our families and our congregations. She said, Jews used to care about the plight of immigrants because the immigrants were Jews. Now we care about their plight because we are Jews. If you'd like to read more articles and sermons from the rabbis on the trip, just let me know. This is what we saw. The streets of Juarez, Mexico, are now lined with tents and tarps. Families with small children, the elderly, all waiting for their number to be called for their asylum hearing. Their border used to look more like ours with Windsor. In the beginning of the Remain in Mexico policy, numbers were being written on the arms of migrants. Numbers on forearms. People are afraid to venture too far from the border because they don't want to miss their number being called. That, and they have nowhere else to go. They still live in fear that the dangers they fled from have followed them north. In the past, people were allowed to cross the bridge that links Juarez and El Paso. Migrants would surrender themselves to the border patrol, and they would be released knowing they had to appear for a hearing in the town where they had a sponsor or in El Paso where they entered. The argument to end this practice was that people didn't show up for their hearings, that they disappeared into the United States. The truth is 87% of people show up for their hearings. But now the migrants are barred from stepping on US soil, so they can't even begin the process of claiming asylum. As we met parents and children, aid workers and volunteers, Jews around the world were, start were studying Parashat Lech Lecha, the portion where God tells Avram to leave his land, the place he was born, his father's house, to a land that God will show him. He was promised that his descendants will be as the stars of the sky and the sand on the beach, a reward for his act of faith. God says, Avram, leave everything you know. I will be with you and you will be a blessing and people will be best blessed through you. Avram was asked to take a leap of faith, to follow blindly and hope for the best. The men, women, and children fleeing violence and natural disaster in Central America and other countries were given no such promise of divine protection, no guarantee of safety, let alone blessing. Their journey to the United States is a leap of faith. They had to have faith that at the end of their long journey, they would find a new homeland that maybe didn't expect them, but would receive them and offer asylum from the dangers in their countries. Imagine their disappointment when they are greeted by a wall, by closed doors. Can we even understand how it must have felt to hear that their journey to safety was being called an invasion or an infestation? We took some time to visit with people in a shelter in Juarez run by the Mexican government. I met this sweet girl from El Salvador. She was beautiful. This little girl is not evidence of an infestation. She is eight years old, and she shares a birthday with all my children, March 10th. Out of 650 people at that shelter, we found each other. I was not allowed to photograph anyone's faces or use their names because I was told that migrants still fear for their lives. One little boy walked up to me, wrapped his arms around me, and rested his head on my chest. He was eight years old. My son, Asher, is almost eight years old. This little boy was accompanied by a 10-year-old girl. Bela is almost 10. The 10-year-old girl asked Rabbi David Curiel, a Spanish speaker, how did you get here? Did you fly? No, we took a bus, he said. 
No, she said, laughing and disbelieving. The U.S. is too far from here to take a bus. In her mind, the U.S. might as well have been another 2,000 miles away. We were within miles of the border. Though we didn't need anything but our own eyes and arms to break any communication barriers, they loved being able to talk to David. Visiting the Otero Detention Center was a whole different kind of sadness. Adult men are housed there. We are continuously told by the warden and an official representing ICE that it was not a prison. It is surrounded by barbed wire. Men are housed in dorms of 50 and are only allowed time outside for two hours a day. There is, silent, there is solitary confinement, which we were told the, de the detainees like. Detainees could work different jobs at Otero to earn $1 a day. A two-minute phone call costs more than a dollar. If someone actually visits them, they have to visit through glass and talk on a phone. They spend $3 a day to feed each detainee. How much did your morning coffee cost this morning? I think it's safe to say none of us live on $3 a day. When we ask questions about the stories coming out of Otero, the warden told us that she runs a tight ship and she does as she's told. She reports to the head of a private company that owns Otero, what they call a processing facility. I was being told not to believe my eyes. I chose not to listen. Otero is a prison. The representative of ICE said he loved his job. He said, how else would I be able to meet people from all over the country who come to visit? There were actually signs on the wall that announced MTC Bionic. MTC is the company that owns and runs the prison. Bionic is an acronym for, believe it or not, I care. I don't believe it. These are not criminals. Seeking asylum is not a crime. If you are deported, then enter the country again, that is a crime. Fleeing for your life is not a crime. It wasn't a crime for us. It wasn't for the om almost everyone who landed at Ellis Island. More than 12 million immigrants passed through Ellis Island between 1892 and 1954, with a whopping 1,004,756 entering in 1907 alone. And yet, even during those days of peak immigration, for most passengers hoping to establish new lives here, the process of entering the country was done in a matter of hours. Often two to 3,000 people were processed within a matter of hours. A historian of Ellis Island says no passports or visas were needed to enter the United States. In fact, no paper was required at all. This was a paperless period. All you had to do was verbally give information to the official when you boarded the ship in Europe, and that information was the only information used when you arrived. Some people were denied entry, they could appeal, but it amounted to less than 2% of those who washed up on our shores. Basically, if you didn't have smallpox, pink eye, yellow fever, or the plague, you were allowed to enter within a few hours. Asylum claims in El Paso are denied at the rate of over 97%. And if you are among the lucky 3% that get, gets to claim asylum, that's just the first step. There is no guarantee asylum will be granted. And of roughly 15,000 cases seen last year, only 300 people had lawyers. I'm not advocating for open borders. I am asking that we remember our own stories and realize that the paperless system we benefited from was the luckiest clerical error ever made in history. I'm advocating that we work to fix a broken system that is blaming numbers for its cruelty and its inadequacy. I'm asking you to see human beings. At the border, where there are human beings, I'm asking you to see human beings. There are ways to help. You can support Hyas and Trua'a. Look out for our forthcoming support for Bethany Christian Services in Grand Rapids. They are housing teens who have come to the U.S. alone and need fostering. We are going to work with them so that hopefully some of you or someone you know might open your doors to them. Most of all, use your voice to give these men, women, and children a voice. Help fix our broken system through local government and lobby your senators. Realize that your American passport is the key to the world. It is a symbol of freedom and safety that none of us should take for granted, but many of us do. 
I am honest and I can say I did. I don't anymore. American citizenship is a dream realized for all of us and is still a dream for so many millions around the world. This was on the wall at the Migration Center, made by a child who has obviously received the message that her circumstances are sending, and in defiance writes, Ningun Sierra Mano es illegal. No human being is illegal. Together, we can make sure that people who want to contribute to this country and feel safe here are seen as human beings. Todaraba. Thank you. On a Friday night, warm bread and a cup of wine. What a way to bless the day! The singing the whole world over. Three stars and a quick amen. Next week, do it all again. A man that is connecting me to my global community. Mysteries, a legacy that's begging, please. I'm something to be proud of. And every time we say la door by door, we take the sequence and we add one more a link in the chain of face to the name. It has always been this way. It's not always easy going. We keep on fighting, we keep on growing. Peace will always face an obstacle But there's no problem so unsolvable This is ours, this is us powerful message in mind. We call our president of our congregation, Hillary King, to deliver this evening's announcements. Thank you. Wow, that's 
five of you, thank you for bringing your beautiful, youthful voices here. We're proud you're part of our family. So here's, hi, here's a little something to be thankful for. Temple's amazing caterer will be happy to prepare your Thanksgiving dinner. You can place your carry-out order right on our website, or you can call the Temple office and ask for catering. This year's menu has delicious choices, which includes vegetarian and vegan options, but the orders are due by this Tuesday, November 19th, so don't wait. On Tuesday, right after you place your order, you can join Rabbis Kaluzny and Hornsten for Maloket Matters, How to Disagree Constructively, The Beit Midrash Way, Learn How to Create Constructive Dialogue and Civil Discourse Through Jewish Tradition and Debate. You're having this before Thanksgiving, so at our Thanksgiving table. We're preparing for Thanksgiving with our families. Good one. Okay, great. Well, I'll be there. The program is free and open to the community. On Thursday, November 21st, join Sisterhood for Oy Vey, the holidays are coming. Learn simple tips and techniques to make the holidays less stressful, like ordering your dinner from the temple caterer. Enjoy a holiday a healthy cooking demonstration and more. And then on Friday evening, one week from tonight, please join us for a special Kabbalat Shabbat featuring the music and the music, musicians from Temple's new album, With One Breath. Who's already heard it? Anybody? Isn't it great? If you haven't, go to the website and download it and listen to it before next Friday. It's really great. Um, Finally, on Sunday, November 24th at 11 o'clock is our next Appel concert featuring Eric Hunter, the singer-songwriter from Austin, Texas. The concert is free and open to the community. A little programming note, tomorrow morning service is in the chapel at 11 a.m., not at 10.30. Um, if you want any more information, call the temple office, grab a brochure. On behalf of the officers and board of trustees, Shabbat Shalom. The honor of opening our ark this evening, uh, speaking of our grand country, our country grounded in freedom and wonder, uh, it's my pleasure to invite up Lydia Mobley, um, someone important to our congregation who's shipping off this week as she's volunteering for the Naval Reserves. So we rise together as we honor her and we turn to page 189 and invite up all the youngest members to come up, receive a special Shabbat treat. Alenu le shabbat la don hakol la tet gedula le otze breishit shelo asanu ke goye haratzot velo samanu ke mishpechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem begor alenu ke chol hamonam vanachnu korim Shachavim <laughs> Shemo, 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 Echad. At this point in our service, we turn to the task of memory as we remember those we've loved and lost from our families, from our community. Tonight, we remember names of people we love who've died in the last 30 days in the period of Shloshim. We remember Myrna Bradley.